Hi, Rex here at RW Mods. Today we're going to do something a little different. I know I've been doing a lot of Nova Rossi reviews, and this engine came in to modify, and it doesn't have a whole lot of use on it. It's in pretty pretty clean and good condition. So I I thought I'd do a, a view review on this. I haven't been doing much with Alpha engines lately. Uh, I, I actually have quite a history with Alpha and Argus engines, which are made the same. You know, Alpha makes Argus engines. So I thought I'd do a little review on this thing. It's it's still their current engine, and uh, this one has a lot of neat features to it. So it, stick around and watch it. It's actually they've made some improvements since I've seen the last one. And uh, to go back, um, way back, you know, engines used to be expensive back. I think we started in 06, nitro in 06, maybe even 05, and. Uh, I mean, your your cheapest engine was like two hundred fifty dollars, and most of them were over three hundred for your RBs and Nova Rossi's. And uh, Go engine came on the line, and they they were uh, kind of they kind of copied the P5 originally Go engine, and uh, then so it was kind of the first Taiwan engine to come out, and they actually ran pretty good for the money, and something around the two hundred dollar mark, and it was pretty fast and. Not quite as reliable as an Overossi, but they were, they did pretty well. Well, then Alpha was the sec, kind of the second, I think, kind of just from my recollection, the second uh, Taiwan engine company. And they came on and they had a little bit better quality, I thought. Um, so I started running them, and then uh, Carlton Epps was a distributor for them for a while. I was getting engines through him. He was the, um, he ran the RC Pro Series for a few years. So he would, uh, he ran the RC Pro Series and then he had a, some product line and stuff. And I, I was a dealer and uh, sold quite a few Alpha engines here and there. Ran them myself. And then I think it was around 2010 I did that video of uh, my son Kendall and Cody King at the X-Fest. And that was 2010 I believe was the first year that we ran the Dynamite. The Dynamite XPE was actually an Alpha engine. They just put a blue head on it and Dynamite logo, and that was the same as the Alpha Green head. It was kind of their their buggy engine that was it had tons of top end. And at the time, actually Alpha had better timing numbers, and than some a lot of the the top engines like a Novarossi or not OS. OS has always had pretty good timing numbers, but. So they actually, you know, they actually performed, you know, even for a cheaper engine, they actually outperformed a lot of the, the lower end uh, Italian engines and stuff. So we ran that XPE for a few years, as long as my son ran uh, TLR stuff. And then, uh, then I started taking. I uh, actually was the importer of Argus engines for three, four years, and I sold. Uh, I want to say I think I sold over two hundred. Argus engines. I had a, I had a team and had had pretty good connections and stuff. So it was a, that was a pretty good profitable thing for a while. And then, and then, uh, kind of the time it started to decline. About the time Novarossi Direct started selling everything direct, and you could buy it. You know, when you could start buying an Novarossi for one hundred thirty-five dollars, uh, that kind of cut into the the Taiwan and the import engines. A little bit so I kind of quit selling those and maybe the, the economy probably in that time was down a little bit too so so this is the Alpha Dragon 4 and it's, it's got a few things right away that caught my eye they had changed the carburetor looks a little bit more like the OS carburetor and you know, the way it it looks um, I, and one thing I noticed too was the anodized pinch bolt which I always kind of wondered why do they, you know, a lot of places, a lot of companies make those out of steel, and it's really something that aluminum, you know, would would uh, be strong enough and everything. It's not a lot of load there. I always thought you could save just a little bit of weight and, and dress it up a little bit. The head uh, looks pretty similar to what they've had for a few years. So the, this carburetor has 7.5 on it, which kind of, I don't know if they make a different 
uh, carb that must be the venturi through there or the not the venturi but the the through hole is a 7.5 which is typically usually eight so maybe they they've got a little bit more fuel mileage going down to a 7.5 so we'll take this apart and look at the insides I think you'll be kind of it is kind of interesting um, some of the things in here so we'll take it apart okay we have this uh, Alpha Dragon 4 apart uh, so one thing I knew they did on the Alpha the previous version maybe even the 2 and 3 was this uh, crankshaft they went to a, more of a OS looking you know the cut on it kind of looks more like an OS it looks like kind of a copy of an OS crank which I thought their previous crank um, looked actually better in the shape but but they they've done this uh, for a couple different versions they've done this brass insert in the crank and it's a uh, on their website it's called the equilibrium uh, re vibration reducing thing but, but it's, it's giving you a little extra weight on the on the downside I, I always thought that they're putting it it should be over I always thought it should be over here so it was, it was because it, you know the crank window isn't the crank window isn't lined up with the crank weight or opposite the pin so I always thought it should be you know because most most engines have a weight in the crank here and so this is actually an easier easier way to do it you can just put it right and glue it in with the silicone but I just thought it should have been orientated here <clears throat> probably not a huge difference for a couple different versions they started uh, I believe this is just a chrome they've been chroming the cranks and that uh, hardens the crank pin gives it a little more slippery surface surface so it doesn't wear the the brass bushing in the connecting rod so that you'll get quite a bit more life out of the crank typically when I did the Argus and Alpha the cranks were slightly softer than the, some of the Italian engines uh, you'd maybe get a half thousandths wear more on a you know maybe three three gallons or so it wasn't a lot of difference but it was a little bit of a noticeable difference uh, you didn't get quite as much life out of the crank so this this does kind of eliminate that problem it's not quite as good as a DLC coated but it's it's much better than uncoated piston like I said this engine was used uh, don't he didn't tell me how much he used and stuff it's not it doesn't have a whole lot of use on it you can see that you can see there's kind of a little bit of a black color to some of the parts. I'm guessing it was ran with VP. See that kind of a little bit of a dark tint. I usually get that on the engines with VP that's been ran with VP, which I do not see any problems with the fuel here. There's no rust. No rust anywhere. No excessive wear or anything. So there's not, nothing wrong with the fuel he was using. I was just uh, noticing that. that it, it could be uh, nitrotane too, because that, that's really similar, made by VP. So the the piston on these alphas, you can't really see it quite as much here, but you kind of see a little bit grain, a little little grain in it, and the the pistons that they use are are more of a hyper eutectic, you know, in one to one cars. Uh, kind of they use a call it a hyper eutectic and it's basically got silica in in the piston more and that kind of makes it harder expands a little bit less so these always had a little bit of a grainy look to them connecting rod uh, looks like they've made some changes to it um, it doesn't look a ton beefier it's got the, the drilled holes a little bit different And that I will say was the biggest, the biggest problem with Alpha and Argus engines was the connecting rod. Once in a while, you would see see some failures, and and I'll say it like I said, I, I sold over 200 Argus, and I think I only had one or two people tell me that they broke a rod or complain because they broke a rod. You know, so it was not 
I was not seeing a lot of failures. They did have the Alpha, the Alpha Lutz, one of the versions of the Alpha Lutz. They had a problem with the rods and the brass inside the aluminum. It's pressed in. Uh, must not have been enough of a press or something happened where the the brass bushing would actually spin in there, and that would cause a rod failure. So that that kind of that kind of turned a lot of people off to Alpha, and I, I think since that engine, they've never really recovered fully. And and the you know you have the drop of the Italian drop in the price in the Italian engines too. But uh, I think you know a lot of people were really into Alpha and Ar Argus engine, and once they got a few rod failures, and they went to a different brand. So this is a three-port sleeve. This is the standard long stroke, the standard long stroke engine like a P5, uh, most most uh, engines. Big exhaust port. Some pretty nice cuts. Uh, the the bottom of the sleeve is tapered nice. The air flows around that good. It's one thing the Alphas have always had really good timing numbers. This engine did come with a, a ceramic bearing from the factory. And doing a little research, actually they it looks like all the engines come pre-run, so you you don't have to break them in as long. I think you're still supposed to run a few tanks, but they're they're kind of pre-broken in. The head button, like I said, there's that kind of that black color again. These always had really nice machining. I mean, the, the parts are nice and shiny and look well machined. You can see the, sh the machining on the bottom of this head, you know, it's just nice and shiny. And heads, a, it's a nice light head. I think these are pretty strong. They don't really break fins or anything. There, there was a problem with some of the older ones. Maybe once in a while you get a broken fin. So the carburetor, going back to that, they kind of went more of an OS kind of looking carb. And it does look a little bit smaller in the through hole. It's a long, low speed needle. So it must be a 7.5 through hole. Got it kind of a nice long taper there. I uh, got a, a sleeve, like a plastic sleeve for uh, heat dissipation or not heat dissipation, but heat. So the heat can't go from the block to the carburetor. That's always kind of a plus. You, you can boil the, the fuel in the carb. Probably one of the most interesting things on this engine was when I was surprised when I took it apart was it has a, a drilled back plate. And I, I do I do slightly remember hearing that they were doing this, but I, I I th forgot about it, and when I took it apart, I'm like, holy crap, this thing's got a drilled back plate from the factory. The hole's maybe just a little bit smaller than I do, and it's a little, f I usually go a little closer to the edge here, uh, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Looks like they're, you know, they're pretty much the same back plate as what I remember seeing. And with that, those holes do. As the air comes in through the crank, the air comes in through the crank, and it goes and hits that hole in the back plate, and then it disperses out into the two holes. Because things are pretty tight there, they, the the crank is right there, and then you got the rod, and so all the air needs to come straight and make that 90 and go up to the cylinder. So this kind of gives it a little, the air coming through the crank kind of hits that and goes and disperses out. Alpha didn't uh, come up with this idea. It's been done for quite a few years, and I didn't invent it either. So one thing, one thing with this is I, I kind of wonder if, if they got a hold of one of my engines that I modified. Because we'll look at... We'll look at uh, the timing numbers here. A blowdown 
uh, the Alpha Dragon 4, the blowdown is 42, induction open 146, induction close of 64, for a total of 210. And those numbers are pretty similar to what I used to modify. Maybe I had a little more induction opening, but uh, I used to modify quite a the Argus, quite a few of the Argus and Alpha, and I think I think they got a hold of an engine that I did because you know, with the back plate and the timing numbers, these these numbers are much better one than, than they used to be, and even like that. I think it was the Alpha Dragon 3 is what I had apart once, and I'm like, whoa, they opened up the crank timing. Uh, I think it was from 3 and the 4, so they opened up the crank timing on them. So I, I, I did an engine for a team driver, an Alpha team driver, and I, I told them, hey, I'll do this for you for free, but I don't, I don't want you to give that engine to the factory because I don't want them... You know, copying. That's pretty simple. All they'd have to do is, you know, go to the same numbers I did, and and I I don't think he would have gave it to the factory, but somehow someone got a hold of an engine and and uh, ran some different, you know, change. They opened up the crank timing to what I what I ran at the time. So I thought it was pretty neat that they did have this. This drill that's the only company that I know of that that drills them from the fact on a factory engine. I guess I didn't go through the price. This engine sells for, and that's one thing that the Alpha is not as popular as they were once because I don't believe they have a distributor. There was someone that bought off some of the stock from the previous distributor, and I remember that a couple of years ago. But I don't. I haven't heard much from Alpha in the U.S. lately. I think they're still. You know, pretty strong in, you know, in some Asian company, in, in some Asian, you know, countries and stuff. But I had to go to the Alpha website to find pricing, and this engine sells for three hundred forty-two dollars. Now that is pre-broken. It does have some really nice features, um, and I think it was four, f uh, four fifteen. It, it also had an option with the pipe, so it had. A, but I, I guess it would be kind of nice if someone did pick up the Alpha line in the U.S. again because they are good engines. I, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this engine. It's got this this weight in the crank. They they chrome plate the the crank now, so it, it doesn't have as much wear. It's got this you know modified back plate from the factory. The carburetor looks like a good improvement. Uh, I there's really I like pretty much everything they've done about it. Um, actually, you know they kind of stuck with a three port. I don't I think their five and seven ports were just as good or better. I I'm not really stuck on the number of ports so much as the timing numbers, but yeah, this is a really you know ceramic bearing. It is actually a really good engine. Uh, it should perform well. Uh, my my biggest fear on it would be that you know the rod might break at some point but with the with the chrome plated crank and getting less wear because a lot of times you'll you'll break a rod because your crank has slop and you got you know slop with the you got slop going back and forth and that's hard on the rod and you'll you'll break a rod that way if you got a lot of crank wear or rod wear so with the with reducing the wear there it should last better but uh, I don't know. I it would be kind of interesting. On the other hand, I don't really like it when guys, you know, order order things from overseas because it you're not supporting anyone in the U.S. if you're ordering direct from uh, from China. So it you know if you're not if even you know if it's one of the, if it's a main or dialed hobbies or something, you're at least supporting. Uh, someone in the U.S. that might might sponsor a race that you go to, or have a team, or you know have uh, some kind of you know there is some profit being made in the U.S. So I I don't all in all this is a a pretty cool engine. I, I would you know given the right circumstance I would run them again too. Um, I think in the three hundred forty two dollar price range 
they're kind of overpriced. I mean, it's got a lot of neat features and stuff, but it's still not an Italian engine. And so, I mean, when you can buy a $150 Novorossi or this, this is going to make more power than it's going to make more power than a P5 and stuff, but that was kind of one of the reasons I got out of selling Argus was they were coming out with it. They had a three port. I ran the three port for a couple of years and really had some good luck with it. But they said they were, when the, the Dragon came out, then they Argus came out with a similar and they wanted to price it over $300. And I'm like, no one's, I mean, you might sell a few, but the average customer is not going to want to spend over $300 on a Taiwan engine. So I think that's kind of one thing that's kind of stuck them. They have, you know, they have made some really good improvements. And this is some cool stuff here. It's all good. But it's three hundred forty-two dollars, also. So, I mean, people, you can spend another hundred dollars and get an OS or a FX, or you know. So, that's kind of. I think at at two hundred twenty-five dollars, this engine would sell a lot more. Is what I'm saying, I guess. Uh, so, because I don't some of the stuff, I don't think it costs them a ton more to make. You know, there is a few. You know, to do this and the brass, and you're talking some more costs, but. Not like $150 worth of cost, but so I hope you like the review of this Alpha Dragon. It's something different than what I've been doing. Uh, something I know, you know, I've known the, the brand and uh, really well and stuff. So I, I kind of stuck with me there, and I I thought I'd do a review of this. So thanks for watching.